Hi there, welcome to the Tomb of Illumination. I've just scrubbed the board, so we've got a blank sheet here. So I can't refer to any of my previous videos. But if you're wanting to understand a lot more about our universe that's not told to you, you need to get onto my Patreon. It's only a minimum fee of $3.50 American a month. If you can't afford that, you shouldn't be spending any time trying to find the secrets to the universe. You better go and do something else. Anyway, for those who are searching, you need to, um, there's a couple of videos here that you might want to check out. Einstein's Quantum Riddle, full documentary, it's on YouTube. Uh, Einstein's Quantum Riddle. And I think the other video is, this universe, exi this universe existed before the Big Bang. Now I've described all this in, in practical terms in relation to the flat earth system and understanding the, the 2D plane and the 3D projection. So you need, to, you need to get on my Patreon to see those videos to understand what these guys are on about because I explain it all. You know, they're trying to look for this, um, um, what do they call it, unification in their, all their theories here. Well, I, I've cracked the whole system. I've got everything now. So, you know, it's about quantum entanglement, quantum mechanics. So, we have here, particles only take on physical properties as we observe them. Well, I've been saying this in my video, because basically the um, electron is, is, is the visualized image, pretty much. Like we're in our arc of horizon, right, in this flat earth system. We only see so far. Nothing else actually exists outside that realm. You can hear about it or whatever, but you don't actually see it until you move your arc of horizon into that realm, into that part of the overall collective conscious realm. Okay? So image we, images we see, even the like celestial bodies, they are basically... It, it's sound and our eyes have to how read we read the black hole frequencies and that's what gives us the image it's it's a focal point in that wave the energy in that wave okay because our universe is basically just a toroidal field and that's a wave that's the plowshare wave infinite moving you know it's like producing the pictures and the holographic projection the old time movies, you know, flick the pages a lot, you see the images. Same thing. That's where all that came from. We imitate creation, realize. Two, we have the action in one place has the instant reaction anywhere in the universe if there is no space between them. And there isn't, because that's, you've got your 2D plane. There's no space between them, because we have the 2D plane. That's the ecliptic plane, basically. Everything is in there, goes back to nothing, right? It's a flat plane. But it creates this, the magnetic field creates the holographic projection, which is down there. This is the 3D. This is the 2D plane. There's no space between them. Okay? So whatever's in here becomes a 3D cycle in here. So there's your black hole center and the gurgler down the center, there's vortex water you could say. So that you consider that as the black hole all the way down. So anything, everything's going around the black hole. See the snake is winding around the black hole. But it's all up here in this, this flat 2D plane as a, as a Fibonacci. And then it comes back down and around again to a cardinoid. But this is always moving. Why is it always moving? Because the black hole on the horizon of the uh, you know, sun on the horizon of the black hole is the king. He's at the top of the castle. He's up here. He governs everything. So, and it's him catching up to everything. He catches up to everything in this ecliptic plane. Because he's the fastest. He's on the inside track. He's going to beat everything. So he catches up to everything and doesn't quite pass them. Doesn't quite lap them. So that shortfall in the lap um, makes this image move, 
drop back more. So next time it won't be there, it'll be there extending out to there. This is how our whole realm moves. This is why they say the moon moves backwards. Moon goes backwards, goes west uh, in an easterly track. Only because the, the sun hasn't quite caught up, so it'll drop back. Each month it'll drop back to the east. So will the stars. This is the precession. Right? Get it? 2D plane creating a 3D realm. So if you see this video, you can correlate it all to my what I've described in simple practical terms, okay? They just talk in deceiving science jargon. They don't want you to connect. Uh, so there's 2D hemisphere, 2 to 3, or you've got the, um, like action in one place has an instant reaction anywhere in the universe. So you've got, you've got to consider the northern hemisphere is mirrored to the southern hemisphere. Well, system, isn't it? It's working together. They are the same stars. They're just inverted, back to front, inside out. That's where you can't correlate things. You can, if you really want to. Bit of work involved. Um, science says makes no sense. Well, it makes sense if you come to my site and I can explain it all to you. <laughs> um, that, oh, I'm, I've got here. They need Professor Linz to explain it to them. That's my name, Lindsay. If you're wondering. Uh, spooky action at a distance. That's Einstein's. Uh, that is quantum riddle. Something to do with that. Uh, spooky action at a distance. Uh, single unified theory of the universe. Just pretty much what I've created. I mean, it's all here. And then you just take the theories and add it to this. You've got the whole. You've got the whole picture. So Einstein's theory of special and general theory of relativity, perfectly ex described, space, time, and gravity. Um, but you know, if you watch the video, you'll understand what I'm talking about, and you can correlate it with what I've shown. Uh, they describe it in the largest scale of the universe, but quantum mechanics describes it in the tiniest scale. Okay. So our whole realm is like a, 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 a magnified projection from an atom. It's what's inside an atom. That's why it's, the whole story starts with atom and Eve. Atom and even, and even split. This doesn't exactly show you the even split, but it shows you the split where there's the male and the female, or the positive and the negative. I say the moon is the negative image of the sun, which it is, but that's only an electrical or magnetic uh, concept. You don't go around telling everybody you wash your negative half, do you? Unless you're looking forward to some surgery <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so this is that's what it is, you see. The sun, the moon is the, is the other half of the sun. This is showing us the whole reunification system man on earth has to seek reunite the sun because the sun is male and female x and y chromosome the woman is just the x okay that comes from the atom comes from man man is the initiator well no that's not right either because it all comes from magnetism so when you think about it the flat air system goes like this there's your central vortex, the female. Look at that. Looks like a female, doesn't it? Part. Then you've got this gap down here where the electromagnetic energy is created. All gets sucked back into here. What was I going on about? Male. See, male, the male entity is created up through here because you've got the north and the south. And then you've got the two norths here, you've got the south. So the female is in here in this northern zone. She's under the, the northern hemisphere. Man is created between the two fields, the two capacitor plates, the metaphysical capacitor plates. I missed the point what I was trying to get at then. <laughs> uh, anyway, moving along. So, understanding um, what are the pyramids are about all around the world, you know, it's a pyramid. Well, we're in the physical world, you've got to go back to the uh, 
creation, back to creation. You've got to flip your pyramid upside down. And all the secrets are there. All there for you. 3D depth of the step pyramid of Saqqara. Or the um, king's chamber being here offset. The queen's chamber being centralized, which is the moon of the mind. The heart is offset to your chest, to your body, isn't it? Okay. And in our realm, we have the um, the throat chakra is the is the yellow is the yellow, and the heart down here is the green. But we're all talking about creation, and that's what religion uh, religion's all about. They get flipped. That becomes the green, the throat chakra. That's the center, the center of the rainbow. Remember the rainbow after your enlightenment. It is stated in the Bible. You got how many colors? Six is it? What's in the middle here? You got green. The emerald tablets. It's all about the central point. Because it's the center of the connection between the two hemispheres. There's the magic in there. Okay? Realizing we need to swap these. Because we have to invert it. Creation is inverted to pre the physical realm. No, the physical realm is inverted to creation. So we've got Einstein's quantum riddle. Not quite sure that's related to this in the video, so check it out. So we call this the, or they call it the informal variant. Can't tell big from small. What have I been showing in all my videos? Go check them out. There's your northern hemisphere. There's the southern hemisphere. Big, big and small. They can't tell because it's all relative to the observer. When he, walk, when he moves south, he's expanding with the field. They don't know. See, they knew this a hundred more years ago. This is where they came up with the theory of relativity. Relative to the observer. No, don't try and spin it any other way. They spin it some other way too to confuse you, but that's basically what it is. Expansion of, of the universe is what they tell you in physics. And it all comes back to the centre north, northern hemisphere of our flat earth system. What do you think the Gleason map is all about? Okay, everything expands when it moves south. Do some research, you'll find other people have mentioned this over the years. So it's always equal, it's all the same. Distance, time over distance is the same anywhere up here. Uh, it may vary a little bit between the tropics because there's no magnetic field between the tropics. Not like out here, how the magnetic field all curves. It's dead straight within the tropics. So, if you're moving north to south, time-wise, north to south, well, uh, it's supposed to be the same between the tropics, in a way, but uh, it's not really, because, you know, we're, there's another flatter system. All the magnetic field lines, well, that's the, if you say that's the northern hemisphere, magnetic field lines are all curving like this. And these curve around like this. But you've got the tropical gap. There's no curving magnetic field lines. It's direct south to north or north to south. So you should make a quicker journey. Okay? But, but you're relating it to latitude. So what, what are these distances? What, what's, who's dividing them up? So just bear that in mind. You've got the travel, the curve of the magnetic field. Otherwise, you go to the modern system now where you avoid the, the curve of the magnetic field, just using your gyro, light, your gyro lasers. But before that, if you're sailing with a compass, following a compass setting, longer journey on these curved fields than moving between the tropics. There's no curved field because the magnetic field is built up on the Tropic of Capricorn, built up on the Tropic of Cancer. So now it's just a direct line between the North and the South Pole. So that's it, that's it there guys, so um, when, you, when you come across these silly globies who go, you might say something, I've got my speaker. 
right now, my speaker. It first stopped, I said, oh, you a flat earther. And you just straight out, said, obviously, why? Are you one of those spinners? You just go, tell me, mate. Well, you know, you, you state, here's one fact you need to know. The magnetic field does not cross the tropics. So how does that work with your spinning ball if the magnetic field doesn't flow out of the south and enter the north if it doesn't cross the tropics? How does it get over there on your spinning ball theory? They wouldn't have a clue. And, and then you stay, well, and then there's another fact, mate. The magnetic field rises from the south and rises from the north. It's actually, you can find it if you go deep into science. How do you explain that? How can it be entering the north if they're both exiting the poles? Then you tell them, it enters Earth either side of the tropics, Cancer and Capricorn. So if the field's coming up and going down, through the Earth, up, over, down, back there, well, wow, is this the infinity symbol? Where else does the infinity symbol come from? If that's not it, it's been around for thousands of years. That's basically one meridian, one slice of the flat Earth, you could say. It's the way the magnetic field works, but it's infinite all the way around our flat Earth. I mean, it completely destroys their globe straight right there. So when they move on and give you some other solution, you say, hey, it's no point, mate. I've just destroyed it in two scientific examples and can be fully proven. Science tells you the magnetic field is strongest at the poles and very weak at the equator. Oh, they failed to tell you that it doesn't actually cross the tropics. Okay? The ball's dead, dead in the water. Get it out there, everybody. Get it out there. Share this video. Get on my Patreon. Um, I'm not sure if you can share my videos out of Patreon, but you share the information anyway. Anyway, thanks for watching. Put a, don't forget to put a thumbs up. Uh, not many people do that for some reason. I wonder why. And uh, subscribe and share it if you're that way inclined. If you want to share the truth. Thanks for watching.